All right, let's do one of these standard Zillow theorem problems. So let the order of G, let G be a group and its order is 56. So here's seven times eight is 56. So that's two cubed times seven. Uh, so let's see here. We know, I'm not, I'm not gonna write this out like in sentence form because uh, I think that just doesn't really make sense. Um, and you, you'll see what I mean. Basically, like, we're going to use these two CELA theorems just over and over. Um, so uh, N7, so the number of CELA 7, or, yeah, 7 CELA or CELA 7 subgroups, however you want to say it, um, is 1 mod 7, and N7 divides... Uh, it's index, which is you just take the order of the group and you uh, cancel out the 7 and you take everything that's left. So that's 2 cubed, which is 27. And so let's see here. What are the options for 1 mod 7? We have 1, we have 8, we have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15... I guess let's hear when I first did this I only I only went up to one and eight um, anyways so you've got 15 you've got 22 then 29 okay so 29 we're already past 27 so there's no way that's gonna work um, oh oh I think I think I I think I realize what my issue here is I I, I think I think 2 cubed might not be 27. I think 3 cubed is 27, but 2 cubed is 8. And so that's why I only went up to 8. So because 8 is the largest number which divides 8. Okay, so that's that's for n7. For n2, n2 is equivalent to 1 mod 2, and n2 divides 7. Oh, by the way, uh, the reasons I circled 1 and 8 here means that there's either one CELO, there's only one CELO 7 subgroup or one, or 8 CELO 7 subgroups. Um, those are the only options. So the other, anyway, so for N2, we have N2 divide 7. So let's see, we've got 1, 3, 5, and 7. And so 1 and 7 are the possible numbers of um, CELO2 subgroups. So if N7 equals 1, then we are done. And that this is this is very important to realize. Why are we done if any N7 equals 1? That we're done because we know that all CELO all CELO P subgroups of a group are conjugate and that like if you not not only are they all conjugate but if you look at the um all of the subgroups of g that you get by conjugating a celo p subgroup are precisely the other pilo celo p subgroups and so the fact that uh there is only one celo 7 subgroup means that if we take this CELO7 subgroup and when conjugated by any element of the group, it's going to give us, obviously it's going to give us another CELO7 subgroup, but there's only one, and so it's going to give us that same CELO7 subgroup. And that turn that is precisely the definition of normality. And so that's, that comes up all the time in these CELO theorem problems, is that like if you want to find a normal subgroup, uh, if, if there's only one CELO P subgroup, then you're done because that CELO P subgroup must be normal. So anyways, so that's if N7 equals one. If N7 equals eight, then G contains, uh, 8 minus 1 times 7, which is 49, non-trivial, 
Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I'm I'm doing this wrong. I'm I'm thinking if n2 equals 1, then we're done. If n2 equals 7, Oh, did I write this down wrong? Ooh, I think I might have messed this up a little bit. Let's see if I can work through this. Um, so if n two equals, let's 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 say yeah, sure. Let's let's keep the way we're going. If n two equals one, we're done. If n two equals seven, then g contains um, some number of here. I'm going to leave this blank now, but some number of non-trivial elements which are contained in CELO two subgroups. Okay, so let's think about this. If n2 equals 7, then... Oh, you know what? I was right. Um, I, I did do this correctly. I was thinking, like, 2s and stuff. Um, any any CELO 2 subgroup has order 2 cubed, which is 8, and so that's important. So I was right. So here, so if we, if we suppose that there are 7 CELO 2 subgroups, i.e. we have, and so those are 7 subgroups of order 8, then what do, what can we do? Um... Note that if you take and and this is a this is another really important fact about uh, subgroups, which uh, this is a technique that comes up all the time in the CELO problems. Um, but it's not really discussed in the, or it might be discussed in one of the examples. But it comes up a lot. It's not a theorem because it's like so easy. You the the it's like the proof is almost as long as a statement. But it's that if you have Seven. Let's say you have seven CELO two subgroups. Then, uh, if we suppose that they don't, yeah. Let's say we have seven distinct CELO two subgroups. And if you look at any two CELO two subgroups, their intersection has to be trivial, because their intersection is a subgroup of each group that you're taking the intersection over. So, because it's a subgroup, and because some gr subgroups have to divide the orders of their groups, um, oh, whew, maybe this argument doesn't work here, because that, that, that argument that I'm explaining only works for prime numbers. So, let's say we have, uh, so like, for example, let's say we have two distinct S not two non-equal CELO 7 subgroups. Then, if you consider um, their intersection, their intersection is a subset, or it's a subgroup of each of the individual groups. Um, and so it's, the order of the intersection must divide the order of each of the groups that we're taking the intersection over. So the order must divide 7. So it's either going to be 1 or 7. Now if it were 7, then the intersection would be... Um, the, then the, the intersection of the two groups would, be, would have the same size of each of the two groups individually, and so they'd be the same. And so um, if they're distinct, then we know that their intersection has to be trivial. So... Anyways, I don't think this argument works for the CELO2 subgroups because CELO2 subgroups have order 8. And we don't have that nice fact uh, at our disposal. So let's go back to if n7 equals 1, then we are done. If n7 equals the other option is 8, then g contains... How many non-trivial elements would we have contained in CELO2 subgroups? So for each of these CELO7 subgroups, one element is the identity, and the remaining elements are elements of this subgroup which are not contained in any other CELO7 subgroup. And so the number of remaining elements we have is 7 minus 1, 
and then we have eight of these, so that's eight. So six times eight equals 48. Okay, so if n7 equals eight, then g contains 48 non-trivial elements, which are contained in Celo seven subgroups. Um, so then there are eight elements Um, there are eight other elements of G because, okay, obviously that's just, uh, set arithmetic, like, uh, the, well, not, no, that's not set arithmetic, that's arithmetic, arithmetic. So the order of G is 56, and we've described 48 of them, and 56 minus 48 is 8. So there are eight other elements of G, and uh, these form one and only one uh, CeeLo two subgroup. So, um, so n2 equals 1, and so we are done again in this, in this, uh, in this case. So re remember, by the same argument from before, if n2 equals 1, then g has a CLO2 subgroup, and conjugating it will, conjugating it by any element of the group will yield that same subgroup, um, because it's the only CLO2 subgroup, and so that's it. And yeah, that's that's how this works. Um, trying to think if there's any other tricks. Uh, the the uh, another thing to keep in mind if this isn't full. I mean, this this should. I, I was a little loose here, and when I say like, and these form one CLO2 subgroup. Uh, one way you can say that is that you've got these eight elements, you, you've got eight remaining elements in G, and so if it were the case that N2 was e equal to 7, then you would have to, Ooh, wait a minute, that, would that work too? Hmm. <laughs> Right, because let's see here. Let's let's think. If n two were equal to seven, then what does that mean? That means that we have seven CLO two. Oh, oh, right, right. Of course, of course. I keep, I keep, yeah, I keep mixing these up. Okay, so if n two equals seven, that means that we have seven CLO two subgroups i.e. seven subgroups of order eight. And um, you can't get seven different subgroups of order eight using just eight elements. Um, I mean, it could be... It, 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 it's, it's not like the uh, scenario with the uh, CLO7 subgroups where, like, the subgroups have to be completely... Um, disjoint, or at least there's there we we can't. I don't think we can make any like bold statement like that. Uh, but we but what we can say is that you can only you can only fit one CLO, uh two. You can only fit one CLO two subgroup in the remainder of the group, and so there's only one CLO two subgroup, and so either there's only one seven CLO subgroup or there's only one two CLO subgroup. And whichever one of those happens to be the case, uh, that will give you a normal subgroup. And so there we go. We're done.